Welcome to the channel and welcome back to the Garage Dream Build series. Over the past couple months, we've been taking my two-car garage from studs all the way to what I consider a dream garage, and today we're doing the epoxy flooring. We're taking the plain old floor from this, and we're gonna make it this. How we're gonna do that is two main steps. Prep, which consists of patching, grinding, and cleaning. And then application, which consists of primer, epoxy, We're going to go over installation, we're going to go over cost, and then we're going to go over my final thoughts, some things I'd do differently, and a review of the Armor Garage product that I'm using here today. Let's jump into the first step, which is patching some of the holes that were in my garage floor. These are the holes here, so what we're going to try and do is clean them out real well with water, scrub them out with a brush, and then put the bonding agent down, and then mix up the concrete and put that down, and uh, yeah, just see if it holds, and if it doesn't, then try something else. The first step is to make sure the floor is all clean. So we sprayed it off with a pressure wash, and then we scrubbed it out with a stiff brussel broom. After it was clean, it was ready to mix up the concrete. We chose some concrete patching from Lowe's, and we also picked up a bonding agent. We read the directions on the packaging as far as how much liquid, bonding agent in our case, to mix with powder, which is the ready mix concrete patching. We mixed that up, and then we also applied the bonding agent to the floor before we put down the concrete mix. Once we put down the concrete mix, we spread it as evenly as we could with the trowel. The trowel wasn't larger than the hole, so what I did was got a piece of wood, put it over the concrete, and used that to level it out. Since I had the concrete mix, I also wanted to repair the garage lip, so I made a mold and then applied the concrete to the lip. that holds up. Um, I'm also going to have the epoxy patch because I have that crack over there so I'm going to do a couple of the other little holes with the epoxy. The first step to this project we already accomplished which is patching some of the floors. So we're going to go over them with a the grinder today and see what they see how they hold up, see if we need to use a different type of patching. But after that was done, next we need to get to step two. Step two is grinding down the floors with the grinder. As far as grinding goes, there's the floor grinder that I'm going to show first, and then the hand grinder I'm going to show next. The floor grinder was awesome to use. I had a textured garage floor, so it kicked up a lot more dust than a normal floor. This filled up the dust extractor many times. You'll see early on in the video, I chose to not change out the bag or filter and just let it run. The garage filled up with dust. From there on in, I changed out the filter every time dust started flowing out of the grinder. I went over the grinder with three coats. The first coat was to get off the texture. The next coat was to take out any divots. My floor is wavy, it is not level, so there are spots where I would go over and it just wouldn't get the texture off. And then the last time was trying to make it as level as possible. After that was done, we needed to go over it with a hand grinder. I didn't have a dust extractor for the hand grinder, so you can see dust all over the garage. This let me get right up to the walls, the stairs, anywhere else. I just used an angle grinder and I put a concrete blade on it. So we're done with the first round of pressure washing. Pressure washing? 
We're done with the first round of pressure washing. So what the first round was, was just to get all of the dust out. So we swept it out and then we wet the whole floor down, tried to pressure wash as much as we could out and then use a squeegee to get all the water out. So now what we have to do is wet the floor back down, hopefully free of dust, and then put the muric acid on it. So the next thing we have to do is take the acid etching and dilute it by putting it in the water. So I have two gallons of water right here. Uh, I'm gonna use a good amount of the acid etch solution. I'm hoping I only have to do this one time. So I'll go over the garage floor. They recommend to do it in sections of 300 feet. So I'm gonna do the left side and then I'm gonna do the right side. Once I have the mixture, I'm gonna spread it around with this brush. Ooh, should clean that off first. The floor has been acid etched, so now we need to neutralize it with the TSP that they give us. So we're just gonna sprinkle this all over the floor. Sprinkle it all over the floor, rub it in, and then hose it down one last time with the pressure washer. It is a new morning. The garage has dried overnight. Hopefully all, all the holes are dry and we can go ahead and patch it, but we are going to try and do that today. So this is what the floor looks like. Everything's pretty clear. I am gonna go through, I'm gonna sweep this up. I'm gonna use a bristle brush to clean out these areas because these are some of the areas I'm patching. All these uh, pits all over the floor. I'm gonna try patching with the Rust-Oleum stuff. I'm gonna also try patching this line. There's a little bit of debris because I cleaned up uh, the sill around the brick yesterday. Everything is swept and scrubbed. Now we need to mix the parts. So pretty simple, two parts of B, one part A. So we're gonna mix that up here, we'll put it on, mix it up. Now we're gonna try and patch these holes. If using this same Rust-Oleum patching, do not put it on like I I would get a trowel that is wider than the hole you are filling and to make it as level as possible going over the hole. I piled it up and didn't realize it was going to be very hard to sand with a sander, so I had to use a grinder. Since I already returned the floor grinder, I had to use a hand grinder and that led to several noticeably uneven spots where I patched the holes. If you get as level as you can and just use a hand orbital sander to go over it, I'm sure you'll have a better result. Divots are filled, the epoxy is ground down, we are ready for the base layer of paint. I'm gonna mix that up now and then put that down and then it's eight to 10 hours before my next coat. So before I do that, I am gonna sweep it one last time just to make sure I have everything up and then we're gonna get started. It is finally time for the first layer of the primer. It's not the epoxy yet, but it's time for the primer and I am so excited. So, what we need to do is we need to mix part A, part B, and the bucket. Oops. We have the roller to spread it on the floor. We're gonna mix it up and then once there are no more streaks, we're gonna dump it out on the floor. We're gonna do one gallon at a time, so half, half in here. Mix it up, dump it out on the floor. Should cover half the floor and then we're gonna do the second half of the floor work from our way working our way from the wall to the stairs. Um, we also have a brush to cut in the edges and a drill and they supply this bit to mix everything up. So the reason we're priming is because 
Sometimes it's optional. Since we sanded the floor down, there's a lot more pores and the pores are going to absorb the epoxy. So since I have a 575 square foot garage and a 575 square foot kit, if I do the epoxy alone, I run the risk of it not covering it because the concrete absorbing more of the epoxy. The primer will go down, it'll seal all those holes, it'll cover the floor, and then that'll ensure that the 575 foot kit with the, um, the epoxy, the black, will go down and I won't have any issues, won't have any issues with it adhering, anything like that. So that's what we'll be doing. Spent about eight to nine hours and the primer is completely dry, even in the somewhat thicker spots that I put on. So by dry, the site says whenever you press it, it shouldn't leave a fingerprint in it and you can walk on it. So I'm walking on it just fine. Um, and then it's not leaving any marks. So then now the next step is mixing up the epoxy and then putting that down. And that's gonna be the most, besides cleaning, the most important step, getting the mixing right, not letting it set up too fast, spreading it. There's uh, a whole bunch of instructions online at Armor Garage, so I read through all those. Uh, we're gonna take those exact steps that they recommend. All right, so we're finally ready for the epoxy. I'm gonna explain it and then I'm gonna do it because I need to do it pretty quickly after I start step one. So step one is mix both of these separately. So I'm gonna pop open these containers, mix them, uh, Mix them separately so the color is thorough, there's no streaks in it, there's, this is not colored, this is black, so mix it until there's no streaks. Once I mix both of these separately, I'm going to measure them out, two parts A, one part B. I'm going to do that with these containers back here, I have this one marked at 80 ounces, this one marked at 40 ounces. Once they're measured out, I'm going to combine them into the first bowl, I'm going to mix them with the drill. And I have this wand I'm going to use, recommends the mix for three minutes, and that will make sure this mixture is consistent. So that's what we're going to do for mixing, and then we have to apply it. So the three steps they call out for application are pour, squeegee, roller. So what that means is we have it in our bucket, we're going to pour it out. We're going to break uh, this down into three different batches and split the garage up in three different sections. So we're going to pour this on the first section. After we pour it, take the squeegee they supplied and the rod you have to supply and we're going to squeegee it to spread it out as much as we can. Once, it's, once it is spread out and squeegee, we're going to take the roller and we're going to roll it out. That should give us a nice epoxy. So another thing we have are the spike shoes for the epoxy. This came with my kit. If it doesn't come with your kit, I would recommend getting it. It's going to make it very easy to go back, walk on somewhere I've already applied epoxy without leaving shoe prints. So the epoxy has been left overnight and it is cured and it's now time for the military top coat. But I wanted to show you guys how the epoxy turned out before I put the top coat on. It did come out a lot grittier than I was expecting. I imagine that's because number one, I didn't prep all the holes so I knew there were gonna be divots. And number two, the uh, heater I left running the whole time because it is colder outside. I wanted to keep the garage warm so the heater was probably kicking up dust. So as we look at the floor, you can see the, um, you can see the dust and dirt in there. You can see the air bubbles. It actually feels nice to walk on. It has kind of a, a gritty feel to it, um, even though the slip adhesive isn't in yet. We do have the slip adhesive in the military top coat, so we're gonna put that on now, and we're gonna see what the finished product looks like in about two to four hours. Last step, we're gonna apply the military coat. So what we need to do for the military coat, besides mix it up, it's only one part, so. We have the military coating right here, and then we have the anti-slip adhesive right here. So all I'm gonna do is take this, put it in here, stir it up. We have a new stir. 
stir on the drill, dump it in the pan, spread it with the roller. This goes on with the roller, and then, uh, yeah, should be good. So this is the final result. We are all done, all the coats are done, everything is dry. I still need to wait a couple days for the vehicles to park on. But if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. There's more videos like this that are gonna come out. We have to finish the rest of this garage and this will not be the last of the projects that we get into. So as far as the finish, I'm extremely happy with how it came out. I love the way it looks, but there are things I could have done differently to get a better result. One of the things being, if I would have done this project in the summertime instead of the wintertime, I wouldn't have had to run the heater, which would have cut down on a lot of the dust in the air, and I think it would have led to a better finish. Another thing is patching the holes. I chose to only patch the big holes and not all the holes. Obviously, that's going to lead to little dimples in your floor, but another part of patching the holes is I chose to use the floor grinder, pass it edge to the floor, and then fill the holes. When I did this, I overfilled the holes in the floor grinder where I went back. I had to use the hand grinder to grind down the holes, and that led to a bunch of uneven spots in the ground. The last mistake I made, and it's a really dumb mistake, is not paying attention to cure times. So they said about 8 to 10 hours for the, for the floor to cure. I waited that long, plus a little bit. I did the fingerprint test around the edge, and then I decided to take a stroll around the garage to check out my work. When I took a stroll around the garage, I didn't realize until I got back to the steps that my feet were leaving prints all over the floor, and those feet made it so the top coat did not adhere to the epoxy properly in certain areas. So I believe in doing those three things differently, it would be a much flatter, a much better result. It would also be more time consuming to make the floor perfectly flat and do a lot of those steps, so I am very, very happy with the result of my floor. So now let's talk about cost. I chose to go with Armor Garage mostly because of the cost, also because their staff were very knowledgeable, talked me through this, and made me feel like I could actually do it myself. So for the primer, the epoxy, and the military top coat, it includes the squeegee, some rollers, paintbrush gloves, a couple other odds and ends, the spike shoes. So for all of that, it came to $1,000 and that included shipping. I think that price is a pretty awesome price compared to other manufacturers out there and the reviews other manufacturers have, the $1,000 for the epoxy. I also needed to take down the top coat of the floor because it was a textured floor. Maybe with your floor you don't have to do that, you can just get away with acid etching, but that cost me $400. My floor also had to be patched, so with the concrete patching and the rust oleum patching, that was about $100. Then on top of that, there was the blade for the angle grinder that is a wearable part, so I threw that in as well. So that brings my cost to around $1,600 for the floor. If you don't need to take a lot of those steps and you can just get away with acid etching a couple of times, it will cost you about $1,100 to go with Armor Garage and do your floor, and you would get a better result than this because your floor is already in better shape. So as always, if you would have done anything differently or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time.